very good afternoon each one of you welcome to 47th session of eltai webinar series as you all aware that english language teachers association of india is organizing these sessions those who have joined today standing of our association I'm so sorry for the technical glitch in between. Now may I please request Dr. Amita Arora to introduce the topic as well as the speaker. Thank you, Dr. Shravan. Books are the quietest and most constant of friends. They are the most accessible and wisest of counselors and the most patient of teachers. No statement could be more true than this. Time immemorial has proved the worth of books. The importance of reading is completely undeniable and there is no friend as loyal as a book. Of all the skills that one learns, reading is considered the most essential skill. Reading transports us to the worlds we would never see, introduces us to people we would never meet and instills emotions we might never otherwise feel. 
through reading a more solid foundation for communication is built reading is the gateway skill that makes all other learning possible a strong background in reading skills is the basis for all other disciplines in addition it also provides an array of health benefits it's an exercise to the mind helping one to relax and be calm to acquaint us with more benefits of reading habits and strategies to improve reading skills i would like to introduce today's speaker dr purva devi srikanthan phd in elt she is the director academics epic language private limited ma'am manages assessment and test administration processes and speaking examiner for cambridge exams since 2013 she is an approved trainer for oet that is occupational english test for healthcare professionals she has authored supplementary and health books of and uh, of many remarkable courses and she is course book editor she has presented papers in symposiums attended workshops on elt and presented posters at alte 2013 international conference may i invite dr purva devi on board to enlighten the gathering about reading skills we extend a hearty welcome to you ma'am uh Thank you for that wonderful uh, introduction, Dr. Ramita Arora. Um, so, uh, good evening, everyone. I am Purva Shrikan, um, and uh, I'm really glad to be here. And today's topic is teaching reading. Um, I assume that uh, all the members here are teachers uh, of uh, schools, and uh, one of the most uh, difficult aspect uh, that we always face is that. Uh, or the child does not read at all or uh, you or the parent will have a complaint saying uh, the child does not read at uh, home at all or that the child does not understand what is written now this actually sort of emphasizes the need for reading and uh, today's session is uh, going to be on how to teach reading uh, especially focused on uh, school children uh, so before we begin the session a uh, very uh, this was a slide uh, that was made for uh, uh, my introduction and uh, since amita has already done that i'm just going to skip this and we'll go on to the next one so the cambridge dictionary says that uh, the word read means to look at words and understand what they mean uh before we continue on to the next slide i just want to confirm that all of you are able to hear me is my voice audible yes okay. ma'am please go ahead yes so when we say we look at words and understand what they mean uh, that's a rather vague and a very profound uh, explanation uh, see th the problem is that when we actually look at words it's only our background knowledge that actually helps us understand the word uh we don't actually understand the word just by looking at it there is a lot of uh, background work that has happened throughout your you know throughout our learning years and as well as the years where we dedicate ourselves to professional development and this i hope will help you uh, to uh, focus on your professional development and uh, understand the reading and teaching pedagogies for teaching reading in classrooms right uh, before we do that let's start with a poll i just want to uh, uh, you know sort of understand the crowd here um, so uh, dr shravan could you just uh, post the poll there poll is published yes thank audience you audience can please attempt uh, we'll just give a minute uh, and not more than that uh, so you could close the poll uh, right after a minute sir So if you have a considerable number of votes i think you can just tell me uh, which flavor actually got the maximum 
so chocolate gets 44 percent vanilla okay. gets 30 percent coffee gets nine percent and strawberry gets 15 percent oh fantastic okay so this is sort of an icebreaker that you can actually use in your class sort of uh, try to fit in some attributes to chocolate chocolate is supposed to be someone who enjoys life who's a little bit more decadent about a lot of things uh, and vanilla is someone who is super classic strawberry is a very sweet person and coffee is someone who loves adventure uh, because you know you have to get used to the slightly bitter taste so uh, something like this you could actually attribute a lot of these qualities into these ice cream flavors and get your students to answer this and sort of make it a fun game where you actually get them to think of what chocolate means to them in their head uh, or what vanilla or any other flavor means to them. You could use uh, any of these uh, uh, polls uh, sort of questions like uh, what flower are you or what animal would you be? And you could uh, sort of get your uh, students interested in what you're going to say next. So. Apparently, we are all slightly decadent and uh, very bold people. So I'm also a chocolate, so great. Now, uh, why is reading such a big deal? Uh, the problem uh, in uh, understanding reading and uh, getting to read a lot in itself is a rather difficult uh, aspect that we all face in our classroom starting from primary up till the tertiary level of education. In our country, uh, we do not grow up in, a, in an environment which promotes uh, English language uh, uh, teaching. We generally are more comfortable speaking in our own uh, native uh, tongue. And this sort of creates an issue for children to speak in English. And uh, if you notice, uh, there is a clear divide between schools that are urban and then schools that are semi-urban and rural. Now, you will not get to see a teacher or children speaking in English in uh, many of these schools. Only in a few schools uh, in urban uh, uh, kind of places do you see that English is more uh, uh, frequently used or it, it's mostly uh, used in the classroom. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, if I was just looking at the chat. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lumbi, for that insightful comment. Uh, so what happens in our classrooms is that there is a mismatch between the use of language in classroom and outside classroom. We do not start with basic uh, bits and calc or two concepts that we need to understand before we start teaching. teaching. Bits is basic interpersonal communication and uh, calc is cognitive. Cognitive academic language proficiency. Now, what happens is uh, in rural uh, villages or in rural places, you will notice that uh, students do not speak fluently in English, but they will have better uh, writing. Uh, uh, as I mean, their uh, writing aspects are slightly better. But if you go off, uh, go on to some metro, what you will notice is that students can actually speak very well, but their language, their lexical content and their grammatical content sort of takes a hit. So when we actually start teaching children, we have to understand that we do not travel from Bix to Calc, but we are actually traveling from Calc to Bix. So our focus is more on cognitive academic language proficiency, which means that we are trying to help children understand language from its features and from its lexical aspects rather than from the interpersonal uh, communicative aspect. So we start with the alphabet, the word, the phrase, and then the sentence. And our children learn this. And after learning the word and the phrase and the sentence, then they make meaning of it. And that is one of the reasons why we have an issue with children instantly identifying the meaning of a phrase because for them it's always been a word level phrase level and then a sentence level learning and this if we understand this will actually help us uh, build activities wherein we can include meaning making uh, uh, you know features or meaning making activities or exercises into our teaching programs right uh, 
why do we read uh, if uh, if someone can put it in the chat box i'd be uh, uh, interested in uh, uh, i'm knowing what you think why why read Uh, participants, I'd like uh, for you to actually put it uh, in the chat box. Why do we read? Yes. Fantastic. We read for um, we read for knowledge. Oh my God. <laughs> So yes, from uh, I've got uh, a number of uh, people giving me the uh, response. Yes, very important. There are two aspects uh, to get gain knowledge and also for entertainment. So it's either for information or for entertainment. So now when you look at information, there is a number of different categories in Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, it would. Uh, I see a lot of you uh, telling me that we uh, read for uh, vocabulary, for comprehension. Yes, fantastic. All of these do matter. They all come into the information aspect of reading. Now, there is something called reading for entertainment. Right. So how do we use the reading for entertainment aspect and get students to uh, use that and progress to reading for information. For now, if you notice, most of our school students are actually reading for academic purposes and uh, they do not read for entertainment. Therefore, reading is no longer fun for them. Uh, so the one of the main aspects of every English teacher is to make reading fun. And it need not be just uh, us teaching them whatever is there in the textbook, but we should be able to go beyond the textbooks and get them to read a lot of uh, novels. Yes, someone has mentioned fiction. Yes, definitely. Uh, if uh, the problem with us is we're always time bound and it's a, you need to put in a little bit more effort to get uh, uh, children to be interested in reading. Now, how to read? Uh, we will be looking at the aspects of how to read based on the purpose for which we are reading, which will come a little later and what to read. Uh, both of them will be addressed in the next segment. Yes, reading is for, thank you, Arnav. It is for leisure, entertainment, yes. Now, uh, we have another poll coming up. Uh, so I want all of you to just answer this poll. Um, just sort of give me, uh, gets me uh, some info about uh, your reading habits. The poll is on, I suppose, Dr. Shravan. Yeah, it's on. Okay, thank you. I think we'll give them 45 seconds this time. Sure. Thank you, sir. So 45 seconds done. I think we have some 15 seconds more to go. Pura madam, I also wish to mention that apart from English teachers, there some students. students have also joined us. Okay. And the results of your poll is one or less 43%, two to five 39%. I read all the time 17%. Okay, fantastic, uh, all of you. But I'm really disheartened that only for most of you read uh, one or less. Uh, it depends on the book, you know. If it's going to be a Milson Bone romance, uh, you know, edition, it's going to take three hours. So uh, it depends on the book, actually. Yes, but uh, if we are teachers, I think we need to read more uh, one because uh, then uh, we uh, we sort of uh, will encourage our students to read more too. And if your students you definitely need to read more. Um, uh, I'm sorry that I did not address some of you, um, like uh, Dr. Shravan said, uh, some of your students. Uh, it's a good idea to start reading. And uh, this is a great habit to start any at any age, but it's a great thing if you have this uh, habit, you know, inculcated. One, because 
reading helps your vocabulary reading actually sort of imprints in your head some phrases some sentences some grammatical structures which you don't need to have learned uh, you know uh, in a prescriptive manner so you you would if you read constantly uh, your uh, grammar structures need not be learned in an english grammar class rather you would uh, uh, you know it would be something that is uh, acquired by you and you'd be more uh, proficient with it even with minimal effort but the most important thing about reading is that it allows you to create a universe in your head you are creativity and the way you ideate so the the idea creating capacity of our brain increases so much that uh, we we will be able to create our own universes our own worlds and that is a wonderful aspect because it helps your cognitive uh, uh, brain to uh, improve and it gives you a lot of creativity before we go on to the sub skills of reading yes i did see a lot of you mentioning a lot of methods and approaches yes we do uh, have uh, three very uh, common and very well known methods the bottom up the top down and the interactional method like every um, elt uh, theory book uh, it is true that no one method will be successful uh, in getting a person to uh, you know uh, understand and acquire the language so as of now it's always better for us to sort of uh, combine some aspects of top down approach and some aspects of bottom up which is more of the interactional approach method now the interactional approach method is actually something which uh, recently i read uh, uh, about esl reading pedagogy and schema theory uh, that is something that uh, you should all actually go and read because uh, sort of gives us an idea as to what happens in our brain uh, when we actually read and how schema theory suggests that interactional approach is one of the best approaches because it combines both the bottom up and the top down uh, approaches to uh, reading because we are short on time i do not want to uh, extend uh, too much uh, time on explaining what is the bottom up or the top down uh, approach it is available online you can uh, read uh, you can google it and then read it uh, by yourself uh, actually helps uh, us you know sort of get into the habit of reading for uh, uh, information and uh, reading for academic purpose now skimming and scanning is something that we do every day in fact i am doing it right now with uh, my chat box uh, i'm skimming through the messages i'm actually because one they are training uh, and uh, moving a little fast so one i can only skim through them and uh, two sort of gives me you know those keywords keep popping up and i'm able to talk to you about them uh, so yes uh, skimming is where we do a very uh, a very uh, topical sort of uh, you know application we just go through it without uh, we do not stress or we our eyes do not go fall on each word we just sort of gloss through it but we get an overall idea but if someone were to ask us to uh, you know uh, repeat what we read or uh, to write down what we read we may not be able to uh, write the same exact thing um okay sanvi i understand um um so if you uh, so that's one of the things that you have to look at when you're looking at skimming skimming uh, can i ask uh, our participants to tell me where we use skimming where we don't uh, read word by word but we just gloss over it and sort of get a, a very basic idea can uh, someone tell me uh, participants where do we use skimming oh yeah um it's this uh, i read an article on uh, uh, schema theory and esl reading pedagogy if you google this uh, phrase uh, schema theory and esl reading pedagogy you will get that article it's on wiley online um, you could uh, just look at that yes fantastic newspaper because we we just read the headlines and then if the headlines actually uh, sort of hook us in we will 
<laughs> revision for exams oh no please don't do that you for revision uh, you need to have uh, a, another skill set needed which is called the stud, uh, uh, study skills or uh, you should have note making skills wherein you take down notes and you write down specific bullet points do not gloss over information uh, make sure that uh, you do uh, read uh, thoroughly for your exams Yes, holdings. Yes, uh, if you notice advertisements, and in fact, one of the very, very uh, uh, you know frequently abused uh, uh, information pamphlet is the terms and conditions. We, I think, we just ignore terms and conditions. In fact, we don't even skim. We just directly go on and just uh, you know uh, uh, type, click the agree part. Yes, scanning during exams. Uh, yeah, that's the scanning part, not the skimming part. Yes, most of the times, yes, it is with billboards and also sometimes with the, uh, uh, if you notice instruction manuals for appliances. Uh, so you will be just, you know, glossing over information and then, uh, yeah, okay, I got that sort of, uh, yes. Um, yes, I will, uh, uh, why don't I do one thing? I will just type it here uh, in the chat box and you could just go and, uh, Untick. Yeah, so this is the topic uh, of that paper. It's on Wiley Online. You can uh, look at it. And where else do we skim? Uh, no, none of those, but uh, we also look at uh, the blurbs of a fiction uh, or a book that we are interested in. What we do, the first thing we do is we look at the cover of the book, turn it over, read the blurb, you know, sort of, uh, okay, sounds interesting. Yes, so true. So this is, uh, why do we skim? Now, let's look at it this way. Why do we do, uh, you know, why do we skim? <laughs> yes, Lakshmi, it is true. If you want to dismantle it, yes. I would rather suggest a service provider for that, but yes, true. So why do we skim? We skim uh, information to get a general idea. So this, when we're looking at the academic aspect of skimming, it would be when we are doing uh, something where we are asked for a main idea or for a generic uh, overall idea. So when we want an overall idea of a reading passage, then we use this uh, to sort of get uh, a general idea of what the text says. Yes. Now, scanning. Scanning is something we do all the time again. Um, so let's look at uh, scanning now. Uh, can we all now uh, sort of uh, talk about where, I mean, where we use scanning? Yes. Where do we use the skill of scanning? What is scanning? Scanning would be you will be searching for a specific word, okay? So you'll be looking through, but not reading each word and looking for a pattern. So a scanning would actually mean pattern recognition. So in your mind, if you're looking for, if we take this screen and I am looking for the word read, okay, so in my mind, read becomes a pattern and I'll be quickly looking top and forth, okay, one, two, three, four. So then I know, okay, there are four places where the word read appears. So when we are looking, yes, when we look for specific information, uh, do we do that for, uh, yes, uh, Yuvika, that's very good. We do use uh, scanning in a dictionary because we, we do not start from A to and end up with Z when we are looking at uh, uh, some specific information. Um, also, there are some aspects where we use uh, uh, scanning when it is to do with uh, answering some questions by filling up a phrase which is available on the passage. Now, scanning also uh, is something that you would see most often everybody, every even the general community, what we uh, use scanning is for finding out uh, our uh, train timings, maybe airport uh, or at the airport where we need to find our flight or uh, for us, it would be uh, scanning for a specific word in a dictionary, yes. Now, scanning actually is to get that information quickly. So, for example, if I were to ask you, 
uh, what are the two uh, words uh, that have uh, um, that are placed before reading in this or three words then you will immediately go only to reading and see those three words and then get to me you will not be reading all the words so yes scanning would then mean looking for very specific information now intensive reading and extensive reading uh, these are uh, extensive reading as for fun okay so if i read a novel uh, if i read for entertainment uh, then i would call it extensive reading uh, extensive reading would be where i want to know about the novel uh, but i don't want to know every word but i'd be interested in some chunks of information i may not be interested in some so i can gloss over those so yes now if we look at intensive reading that is what we want our students to develop or for ourselves to develop also if you notice intensive is for thorough reading wherein we actually have to do a word by word and a phrase by phrase uh reading where we pay attention to the words the way the words are put and the meaning of the words now this is what we need our children and ourselves uh, if your students yes for us to develop uh, intensive reading intensive reading uh happens when uh, if you are post graduate uh, students or uh, if you are phd students then intensive reading would mean um uh, a, an article a literature review or uh, you know um, a thesis by another uh, professor so if you notice in uh, such a reading material you cannot afford to skip some lines you need to pay attention to each sentence you need to pay attention to the inference to the overall meaning to the main uh, idea and what each uh, discourse or the text actually gives you in terms yes intensive reading if for children in school would mean uh, identifying information uh, or uh, getting information from the text and answering questions that are given supporting the text okay so we generally use intensive reading to gain knowledge to gain perspective and to gain understanding of uh, whatever it is that we are reading yes word by word reading is intensive reading uh, but there is something else that we also need to consider uh, there is someone who is a good reader and then there is someone who is yet to become a good reader now what happens with uh, word by word reading in 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 the sense that if you are a good reader uh, if you look at a sentence how to teach reading in class you immediately read it you understood the sentence and you are now ready with the answer but for a person who is just developing their reading skills they are still going to be reading this this question word by word but the cognitive ability or the strategic competence of that particular learner would be to fix how and then to teach reading in class so what happens is in that case what uh, the sort of understanding uh, lev or the level of uh, you know understanding is slightly compromised as opposed to a good reader so word by word reading uh, means uh, different things at different levels so uh, now because we don't have much time i'm just going to look at a very short small poem poem and then we're going to discuss how we will create activities for reading and for uh, teaching reading okay now uh, i i will tell you why this uh, slide is on screen for teachers particularly what happens to us is that we are always in a hurry to complete our syllabus because there is a lot of pressure from other stakeholders now if you note uh, if you look at the notes for the teacher this is taken from the ncert english book 7th uh, standard if you notice the notes for teacher you will notice that uh, at this point build on exercises given in the textbook promote reading habits through story reading not merely teaching stories as texts story retelling choral reading and shared reading honestly there's quite a bit of information in this uh, literature but what we do is uh, because we're so used to the book we generally uh, do not read this and if you notice in the second part of the same uh, screen 
Poems need not be taught line by line, word by word. You may give a model reading, but let every child read the poem on his or her own to feel the richness of language, rhythm, and music of words. So, they are not uh, see. Not everyone can uh, create material. Not everyone can come up with activities. But uh, the notes for teacher is actually a very good place to start uh, because they do give us some suggestions as to how to proceed with uh, teaching reading. And uh, if you are reading uh, a poem, say, uh, then do not just look at the Sparks Notes version of the summary. But when you read a poem, try to understand or try to write down what you make out of the poem. What does it mean to you? Okay. Now we have taken one of the most simplest, a oh, fantastic Mahika. <laughs> Uh, and best of luck. Uh, so we are going to take the most simplest poem called the squirrel. Uh, so if there are any uh, seven standard teachers here, uh, well, <laughs> this is something uh, that uh, you do. Uh, you are probably very familiar with. So yes. Now, even in this chapter, if you notice, they have given enough information on how to teach the poem. These are some of the examples. This is uh, available on NCERT. It is free for download. So you can read through this and you can use some of these activities in the classroom. As, in, uh, as ELT uh, methods uh, suggest, we generally do something uh, to prepare the student to learn. So in the pre-reading, Phase, what we can do and what are the activities that we can uh, include in the while reading and uh, what we can do in the post reading phase. Okay. Oh, thank you, Mageshwari. So, uh, a pre reading activity prepares the student to, uh, you know, accept what is being taught. Uh, think of a scenario where, you know, you just go in, open the book, and then say, uh, well, good evening or good afternoon, children. Today we are going to do this poem. Uh, okay, uh, somebody uh, from the first bench, please read the poem. And then you go on to say, okay, this is like this, this is like that, this. And then think of another situation where you go in and then you say, okay, so how many of you have got pets at home? And then, uh, you know, get them to discuss what kind of pets they have at home and uh, you know how uh, how each uh, pet is different and what do they think of someone else's pet and things such as these and then talk about uh, any animals and birds that they see from uh, their homes uh, so uh, i thought of this because i have a problem with squirrels actually uh, they're very nice creatures but they keep nibbling on my net lawn and uh, I, I get big gaping holes all the time so that was one of the reasons uh, I put that uh, as uh, a question uh, about children uh, seeing uh, animals and birds out of their uh, windows or uh, you know near their homes. Uh, so that's one of uh, uh, you know that's a very good idea for you to uh, include your experience into your teaching uh, activity because that makes it more personal for you and uh, the children know that uh, you know you've done something uh, specially for them and it's something uh, that's coming from you. Uh, and uh, their response will be so much more better. And after this, you could uh, talk about why these animals are absent from our houses now. So if you are uh, living in a high rise uh, building, then there is a possibility that you would only end up seeing pigeons. So then uh, look at the other two questions. And you are actually sort of, you know, from a very general uh, idea, you're focusing down to squirrels. OK, so now the children know, OK, so we are going to be doing something with squirrels. Now they are uh, sort of uh, curious about what's going to happen. And they may not be curious about the poem, per se, but they'll be curious as to what you're going to do next. And that's what you need to do. Get learners to be curious about what you are going to teach them. So uh, a while reading activity. So when the class is in session, now your children, now the learners are ready to un, uh, you know learn more about squirrels. 
So uh, can some uh, can some of you give me an idea as to what you will do for uh, a while reading activity or uh, the teaching activity? I'm assuming that everybody's thinking, but um, because we don't have much time, if you think of it, please make a note in a teaching journal. Uh, and if your students think of how you would want to learn this poem, if you notice the poem, it's actually very, very simple. It's got only six lines. OK. Shravan, sir, I also want uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, want you to cue me when I have only 10 more minutes. Sure, ma'am. Sure. Okay, thank you. So I have some ideas put in here. One, if you, uh, if you want children uh, to do it. See, there is a difference between read aloud activity and silent reading activity. If you notice, a uh, read aloud activity engages the physiology of the voice box, the, the tracheal and, uh, you know, the sound producing area overall. And what it also does is uh, sort of gives learners the idea of how certain words are pronounced, so how you can um, intonate something, the rhythm and the stress. So one time uh, a the teacher can read it or you could give it a uh, free for all and ask uh, if you have time then you can ask a lot of them to read aloud in class now silent reading is mostly for comprehension you could ask your students uh, to read uh, this poem at home and then you can have them come and discuss it in class now the uh, think pair share is a very good uh, idea wherein you pair two uh, students, ask both of them to think about it and then share their ideas. And uh, either of them can then uh, talk to the class about what they thought of the poem. So that's one way. If there are uh, more students in your classroom, then uh, don't make it as a paired uh, group activity, make it a group activity. Now, the key uh, aspect of uh, a one reading activity is that you do not tell them what it means, but you get them to talk to you about what it means to them. Sort of allow them to make their own, uh, you know, opinions or uh, let them comprehend it on uh, their own. And then uh, you have to look at it this way. There are no wrong answers. If there is something which is irrelevant or not coherent with the uh, idea, then you could very nicely sort of, uh, 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 you know, distract the candidate and bring them to the right path. Um, make sure that your classroom is uh, uh, a place where no answer is the wrong answer. You should uh, allow for the children to come up with ideas and uh, they should be encouraged to come up with more ideas. Post reading activities, uh, again, if you notice, uh, we could ask the, one of the best ways to actually get uh, to understand if our uh, learner has, uh, you know, comprehended it is to ask them to write a short summary or a paraphrase of uh, what they learned. Now, they, they, there is another aspect of uh, learning a poem uh, where he has the question mark thing. Yes, you could use the question mark. And then if you are very artistic, you could actually try drawing a uh, you know, squirrel with it. Not sure uh, all of us will be able to do it, but uh, yes. And you could get them to write a poem on another woodland creature, maybe. Uh, this would be a good idea uh, to, in, uh, you know, include if you're teaching certain aspects of the poem. Uh, if you're looking at rhythm, if you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, the aspects of uh, poems, yes, then that's a good idea. Or you could ask them to use free verse and blank verse. So that's, uh, um, yes, uh, I understand uh, that it is, uh, see, the idea of understanding poem is when you're limiting yourself to what someone else is explaining to you. 
if you are able to come up with another meaning and uh, if you are able to discuss it with your teacher and uh, if uh, if it sounds reasonable i think it's good that you have your own uh, uh, opinion on what the poem says see uh, a very good example would be uh, a humorous uh, play or a story uh, uh, written by a british three independents okay so if you know if you uh, look at it they would probably call it humor where uh, there is a um, there is a slave who is uh, uh, who's named raj or i don't know somebody but when we read it uh, how do we categorize it as humor we will not probably use uh, uh, the word humor to associate with uh, a play where uh, the slave uh, uh, is an indian so i think it's good if you actually uh, do have your own opinion but uh, do understand that uh, framing uh, i mean having your own opinion is good for you Uh, as an individual and for holistic development but then there is something else that's called test smartness uh, which means that you need to actually pass or you need to get good grades in which case you need to sort of uh, toe the line and uh, uh, write answers that are expected out of you right <laughs> i understand pigeons are a menace everywhere uh, and if you do have other ideas see when i'm talking um and uh, i kick i come up with two ideas what this does is this limits your uh uh you know creativity ah th these two ideas are good why don't i sort of you know try to work with these two ideas and see how this works out but if you do come up with another idea do write it down because it may not be useful now but it's definitely going to come to you sometime later uh I'm not sure which part I must re uh, repeat, but uh, uh, if you could type it down, I'll check what I can do. So now we saw a very simple poem called the Squirrel. Now for teachers who have been uh, ha who are handling class twelve, this is a familiar poem for you. Keeping quiet by Pablo Neruda. Well, when you take uh, when you are going to plan for this lesson, uh, this is another uh, uh, you know quite another game changer here. so this is blank verse for you and uh, there's so much of hidden imagery and meanings that uh, i think uh, there is a lot more uh, detailing here and uh, uh, in 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 a in a manner of speaking this is easier uh, for you to prepare uh, pre reading tasks and uh, post reading tasks and uh, you need to actually yes look at how you can uh, sort of you know get one uh, group to talk about the first two lines the next group to talk about the next four maybe have a debate see if there are differing opinions and then uh, you should uh, uh you know sort of get them to understand uh what this poem uh, is intended for oh, okay i'm not going to, i'm just going to stop here uh so there are other ways of uh, um you know improving reading now if you notice uh, there are a number of uh, books for young readers um the most uh, simple would be uh, the most uh, common or popular would be harry potter so if yes uh, yes teaching of a poem is very different uh, from teaching reading comprehension but uh, because uh, i thought uh, a short poem would uh, suit the time limit uh, that i do have the idea is not to teach the poem exactly but how do we use the pre reading and post reading activity uh, to uh, get students to read and uh, comprehend based on what uh, background knowledge they have so uh, thank you uh, for that comment now if you notice harry potter Uh, now harry potter uh, there are seven books uh, if you could get your students to read uh, the first book and then maybe do a showing of the movie and then ask them if there is any uh, difference in what they imagined hogwarts to be and what was portrayed uh, in uh, the movie now uh, you know so sometimes if you notice they say oh i thought ron will look a little different oh i thought the car will look a little different oh the bumping willow looks uh, sort of scary you know i thought it look much more 
bigger or you know you'll have children coming up with words like these and uh, and phrases like these or ideas like these so it's a good idea to do this in classroom where you ask the children to read one part of the book and then show it to them as the movie and ask them to compare the differences or the similarities therein another uh, uh, movie that you can or an animated movie that you can use is tangled tangled is a very uh, funny uh, <laughs> rendition of rapunzel so you could take that and you could use because you have uh, the differing inputs actually uh, sort of help uh, provide a range of uh, you know learning experiences you could use tangled and there is a word sashel in it so uh, most of the times when i teach uh, classes i will play the movie and then i'll ask them uh, what is the word sashel and then i'll ask them how to spell it and then ask them where it was seen so then you could also uh, look at how you can compare the actual fairy tale with the re, uh, the modern version and see which one is more acceptable to the children in which case you're not only getting them to read more but you're actually getting them to think more and the more avenues you give children to think i think uh, sort of uh, helps inculcate uh, a sense of accomplishment and uh, uh you know getting them to read books yes that is a challenge you could start by getting them hooked on to something which is very popular and then slowly getting them to discuss it with you especially they would love to discuss it with their teachers once they finish a book sort of an accomplishment for them and then you know sort of oh i read this book why don't you read this book so yes uh, yeah. yes well, uh, ma'am uh, we yes. have a, a a very good evening to the wonderful audience which is uh, giving us a highly highly interactive session here purva ma'am on behalf yes. of eltai family i have to thank you for this very very interactive session and we know that we are bound uh, with constraints mm -hmm. of time but i'm sure we can have more sessions in future like this which are so useful for students teachers parents alike because today in the audience we have everybody there yes uh, uh i will be uh, coming forth with the questions that have been posted by the audience out here before that purva ma'am would you like to say anything else towards closure of keeping quiet oh you want me to uh, talk about keeping quiet yeah no the part was that you've already done the pre and the while and the post no no i was now. just uh, showing yeah. you how different it would be to create a pre reading activity and a while or a post reading activity for keeping quiet because now the learning level and the comprehension level has also increased so yes. while it's easier for me to actually do a session where with a limited time for a smaller poem called spirit see i'm not even looking at the rhyme scheme or the stanza or the meaning but i'm just trying to give you ideas as to how you can come up with more ideas to more ideas. Uh, you know, prepare. Reading yes. really, really interactive for everybody in the school scenario yes. or in the teaching world out here. Yes. yes. So yes. here, first and foremost, I have to thank you, uh, Dr. Purva Devi Shri Kanthan. for doing this wonderful session for the eltai family which is not just en enriching but empowering for all of us uh, you have brought us a refreshingly delectable ice breaker very <laughs> very in tune with the season out here we had taste gave us an insight into the attribute of students and our own attributes so know thyself and know your students i think it's very important you have blended a lot of pedagogy not just teaching reading into this session here for all of us yes uh, from the alphabet to the word phrase and sentences to achieve the purpose of reading you've reminded us about the schema theory the top down and the bottom approach skimming and scanning these are two of my favorites because we are in the domain of school and there is so much information that comes and we need to make meaning out of that information so here my first uh, question to you is that when we are looking into skimming and scanning and teaching students into doing this one popular strategy that we have is for skimming that you imagine that you are a bird skimming over the lake out here would you give us any such strategy one more to take it further yeah. so that it becomes easy for students and teachers to really usually i do this for pronunciation some of my students have a problem with over stressing r okay so what i tell them is think of the r as a float on a lake yes and that your 
tap dance don't jump on the r but you know slightly uh, you know stand on it and tip to on it so i keep telling them think you know keep that image in your head whenever you're going to say iron don't say iron don't do that don't say irony don't do that don't roll your r's so yes uh, uh, so that's one of the ways even i talk about uh, uh, you know i sort of give them these images uh, to associate so this associative uh, imagery actually uh, helps a lot of them and especially when we use the phrase can able to i keep telling them think of a big pillar and think you're going to go you know uh, uh, sort of knock your head there sort of a painful association so you never use that for me the scanning analogy which if i were to do the visual i look at the sherlock homes because <laughs> these days sherlock is a hot favorite amongst all the students yes. there uh, especially so then you have his uh, you know lens and you are looking at it so the right information is coming across to you yes what Now, are the word puzzles if you notice the word puzzle that's yes. a very good scanning i uh, all hidden object games are good for scanning the hidden object game so here for teachers and for our students all of yes. us teachers are students too uh, the hidden object games and puzzles are a great way to build on our scanning skills here yes now i have a very relevant question purva ma'am yes. uh, this is from ramani uh, ramani sir ramani, yes. ramani sir he very he sir. shared that schema based reading as interaction approach is integral to teaching reading so if you could briefly explain yes. the actual process of reading as meaning making by the reader and how it's not simply a decoding process if you yes. could throw light on this uh professor ramni i i am not sure that i can do complete justice to uh, what you asked but i can generally give you a very very uh, uh i don't know basic uh, idea uh, so the the thing is we do uh, have the phonics method and then we also have the uh, uh the uh, linguistic method and we also have something called the hearsay method wherein we show an apple and then show the word and then sort of students sort of make meaning of that fray of that letter creation and think of the apple and they sort of uh, combine both of them and uh, so this is how we begin uh, initially what we do is uh, when we are looking at the decoding level we are looking at words that letters are strung together and we look at how it is being said without actual background knowledge as to what the word could be but when you look at the hearsay approach you are actually looking at and the uh, the multi sensory wherein you use a visual in, uh, input and you use the link, uh, the lexical uh, aspect of the word and then there is some meaning uh, given to it but i'm not very sure if i am uh, really uh, doing the job that you're asking me to do this is what i understood out of it uh, so when we uh, the whole approach in itself is uh, how do we make meaning from what is being read and whether the meaning making uh, as uh, activity Uh, has proved uh, to be uh, successful and uh, that is where the teacher comes in and helps candidates and or uh, learners to figure out if uh, the meaning making uh, aspect of their thought process has actually been good or has actually been successful I so Really, I'm not very so sure. Think, uh, over here, what you have put in is beautiful because it's not easy to explain schema. And it's very hard to also, go. Also, I think good as teachers always learn how to connect the dots, and I think that is where we need to train our students into making meanings because there is a context to making meaning. There's your own experience to making meaning out there. Purva, ma'am, you wanted to elaborate. Please go ahead. uh no that's what i'm saying so because i i do know some amount of it but i don't uh, i don't think i'm an expert in that and uh, whatever i have uh, gleaned uh, out of uh, my own teaching experience is what i'm using in the session so my explanations may sound very half baked but uh, please uh, forgive me for that no i think it's been beautifully done because to simplify uh, the complex is never an easy job mm -hmm. but that's what is the task of a teacher what you've done beautifully for us we have one last question for you from dr lab singh what is the difference between reading skills used by teachers and by students right now because you said students uh, we are going to assume that it's for academic purpose so yes. it's going to be intensive reading wherein they are reading for a particular uh, a test or a goal in, with a goal in mind and therefore there is a purpose to that reading and the purpose could be to understand meaning and then uh, 
uh, use it in another skill, perhaps writing or speaking. So based on what they are reading, they are going to use it on another skill. And this sort of transforms. Uh, uh, it's a process where it goes into their head, becomes an idea. Idea creates the thought. Thought creates some other set of words. These words are expressed in either uh, the speaking form or the writing form. Now, uh, when reading is used by teachers, now, all this also uh, is applicable for teachers. But when we are reading, we're actually reading not only for information, but we're also reading for assessment. So the way we will uh, work through the text or the discourse will be slightly different from the way a learner uh, is going to approach reading. Uh, that perhaps is uh, one of the main uh, differences. The other would be the comprehension, uh, the level of comprehension. Uh, of a teacher and of a student. So that could also make a lot of difference. And your background knowledge. So as a teacher, if uh, if your background knowledge is uh, sub-zero, then I think uh, uh, what you would give out to the student may also not be very uh, you know, productive. So uh, the kind of background knowledge that we will have uh, and which we will use to associate with what we are reading uh, may be different from uh, what a student with limited background knowledge could uh, uh, you know, associate it with. So I think these are some of the differences. I'm sure that there are many more uh, differences there. Uh, but yeah, and uh, I think the top uh, of my head. Professor Mohan Raj pointed out in the audience, we have wonderful experts in the audience that the schema yes. of the show is different there. So it's <laughs> so uh, <laughs> engaging and it's so humbling to have wonderful people, teachers in this journey. And that's why I feel teachers are very crucial to the transformation that the world is always going to experience to bring growth all around us. Yes. Uh, here again, Purva Devi, ma'am, uh, we can't thank you enough for work. I know tirelessly you've been working on what to present here in the uh, session today, you've gone into the classrooms and brought the classrooms back to us from a grade 7 to a grade 12 and to teachers all across. We thank you once more for this very invigorating session out here. And before we close, uh, there's more. You know, LTI works tirelessly and dedicatedly to ensure that teachers across the world are empowered. So let's. I'm very happy to let you know on behalf of LTI, the English Language Teachers Association of India, about the LTI webinar 48, which will be held on Sunday, April 11th, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time, where English language learning guidelines from common European framework with the wonderful speaker, Professor Ramesh Nair coming across and the moderators, Professor Keshi Mishra and Professor Arpita Sastri. Uh, I think, Eltai, thank you so much for giving us a wonderful afternoon of learning and it's evening now. We go back to the drawing board to uh, actually actually digest what we have learned today so that tomorrow in the classroom we can practice what we have gone through here so purva devi shrikantan ma'am thank you so much and on behalf of the entire family i thank everybody who have taken out time on a sunday to ensure that the wheel of learning continues to roll and grow in india and all across the world uh, so can i just have a word uh... By all means, Purva ma'am, yeah. it's your day today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Uh, I thank all the attendees because uh, you made it more uh, interactive because there was a non-stop, uh, you know, uh, entry uh, responses throughout the session. You made me feel very, uh, uh, you know, you. I, I had to be on my toes most of the time. And I also thank uh, uh, Dr. Monraj and Dr. Ramani uh, who'd been pointing out uh, uh, you know, specific information, which I uh, was trying to gloss over. So thank you so much, sir, uh, for pointing that. Uh, uh, and uh, I can see that there are so many stalwarts there. And uh, it's been a very uh, uh, a grateful session overall for me. I thank Eltai for this opportunity and uh, Eltai Delhi West for coordinating this. They have been working with me so much, uh, you know, for more than uh, uh, 15, 20 days we've been coordinating and they've made this a uh, glitch free, completely flawless uh, session. So thank you one and all uh, for a wonderful session. Again, on behalf of the LTI family, this is Priyanka Bhatkoti saying bye bye. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And I'm sure we'll be back next Sunday to learn more. <laughs>